God's taken me into better things. God's going to put me in a better place. I'm going to be a faithful person. I'm going to see God work in my life as I reach people for Jesus. I'm going to see God do miracles through me as I decide to move for Jesus, anticipating the goodness of God, that God, if I go, you're going to show up, that God, if I give, you're going to come through, that God, if I believe you, God, you are able, God, to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all I can ask or imagine or think. I'm going to be a person of hope. And if you're new today, we're in a series called Stand Strong on the Book of Hebrews. I love that title, Stand Strong. You know, it's God's will for every single believer, whether you're facing opposition, whether you're in one of the most challenging seasons of your life, whether you're a new believer or you've been living for Jesus for a long time, it's God's will for you to be strong. It's God's will for you to stand strong. That's why I love what we're learning about in the book of Hebrews, because the writer of Hebrews is telling us the things we need as a believer to stand strong for Jesus, to see God work in our life in power, to see us be God. I'm going to be bold in the face of opposition. I'm going to see you work in my life no matter what I'm going through. I'm going to stand strong. And that's God's will for you today. God's going to work in your life to stand strong. And last week we talked about one of the warnings that the writer of Hebrews gave. He gave a warning to those who are unsaved Christians, meaning they're a, a Christian in name, but they're not really living for Jesus with all their heart. Jesus isn't really Lord of their life. And it was a warning to them to say, hey, that's not going to help you stand strong. That's not going to see God work in your life. You need to give your life totally to Jesus, because as you're saved, that's where you're standing strong. And today... We're going to read one of the most powerful encouragements to believers in the book of Hebrews. One of the most powerful things to every single believer, how we can stand strong and stand strong as we're encouraged. I'm going to look at verse nine right now. Let's Hebrews chapter six, verse nine. Even though we speak like this, dear friends, we are convinced of better things in your case, things that have to do with salvation. I love that already. So good already. I want to speak to you from the subject, better things. Turn to your neighbor and say, God's got something better for you. Turn to your other neighbor and say, and you too. You too. He's got something better for you. Better things. You know, I love the thought of better. Who does not like that thought? Better things. That means there are categories. That means there is more I don't ever want to settle for something good when there is something better. I don't want to just live life in a zone where I have less when there is something better. Something more. I don't know if you've ever had a layover at the airport and you're sitting in a chair and then you look over and you notice there's an airport lounge. And you realize there's something better. In fact, one time David and I were traveling and a guy said, hey, come with us. Come with me real quick. Come with me. We didn't know this guy, but we're really smart. So we followed him and uh, he, we go and stand in this line. And, and I, he, then he started to explain, hey, I have access to this lounge and I'm actually not stay. My layover is not long, so I'm not going in, but I'll let you guys in. And all of a sudden we realized there are pastries in there. There are comfy seats in there. There are charges in there. There was something. I don't know about you, but as a believer, I don't want to live my life just with something that's less when God has something better for me. I wonder how many of you are a Christian, but possibly you're missing out on the better things that God has for you. That's why I love the writer of Hebrews. He doesn't want you to miss out. He wants you to be a strong believer. He wants you to experience all God has for you. Because you know what? If you walk in the better things, then when you face everything life will throw at you, you're going to be stronger in your faith. You're going to see God do more. You're going to see God work in your life in greater ways because you understand what is better. How many excited to learn about better things today? How many excited God has better things for you? There is more for you today. God has God better. So I'm going to give you three things from this passage that are better things. The first thing we see is God has friendship for you. He says this, even though we speak like this, what's he talking about? He's saying, hey, I just gave a warning to people who aren't really living for Jesus, but 
Guess what? Dear friends, this literally means loved ones. Not loved ones like family, like so loved people. Who loves them? God loves them. We are convinced of better things in your case, the things that have to do with salvation. Now, I want you to notice something because oftentimes people get mistaken when it comes to salvation. Some people see salvation as like, okay, I raised my hand. So many people have gotten saved at the church. Thank God for how he's saving people at the church. Hundreds and hundreds of people have gotten saved in the last month. People saying yes to Jesus. But people can be mistaken about how salvation works in thinking that God is just saving them from something, which is powerful. It's not to devalue that. That is, that is honestly the standing that we have in Christ, that we're saved from our sin. But God doesn't just save us from something. He saves us to something. God doesn't just save us out of sin and death. He saves us to life. That's why he writes here, we are convinced of better Things, things that have to do with salvation. So what he's saying is salvation has so much more. The diving board of salvation is giving your heart to Jesus, but there's a whole pool available to you. Now listen to this. I, 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 last, last year, around November, we had the opportunity to go to the Grand Canyon Okay, so we, we piled up in the car because we were a little distance away and we wanted to get there for the sunrise. Had the kids, got up early. We're, we're driving to the Grand Canyon. And when we got out of the car, we were stopping at one of the lookout points and uh, we, we took this picture. This is the kids. And you, kinda, kinda see the, you can kind of see the Grand Canyon there between the trees there. It's really nice. The Grand Canyon is beautiful. It's just a beautiful picture. But I want to submit to you, if we got took that picture, got out of the car, took that picture, then got back in the car and drove back to where we were staying. And then I told you, yeah, guess what? I saw the Grand Canyon. And I showed you that picture. You'd be like, Brandon, you did not see the Grand Canyon. Looking at the Grand Canyon between a couple trees is not seeing the Grand Canyon. Do you realize there are over 50 lookout points for the Grand Canyon? There is a north rim and there is a south rim. There are so many different views. There are trails that take you down so you can capture the beauty and the awe of the Grand Canyon. You did not see the Grand Canyon. You saw part of the Grand Canyon. There is so much more beauty and wonder and awe for you to see. You need to go back and see the whole Grand Canyon. You'd be like, you crazy. But for some of you, salvation to you, you don't recognize the better things God's given you. All you see is that Jesus saved you from your sin, but you need to realize that that's just the springboard of what God wants to do in your life. When Adam sinned in the garden, relationship was broken with God. And when Jesus saved you, he saved you out of your sin so you could have a relationship with God. But not just that, God wants to be your friend. Have you ever thought about that? Your friend. Your close friend. So many people, when they write a story or you hear a testimony, sometimes they say, just like that grandmother said, so sweetly. You know, I know, you know, God, I didn't know if God would hear a grandmother's prayer. Or, you know, oftentimes you hear God's real busy, you know. God, God's got this and going on. Do you realize we serve the king of the universe? That he breathed and stars came out. That everything we see Everything we can touch, everything we can look at under a microscope, everything that we can view through a telescope and much more, God created by just a word. And that God is able to simultaneously have relationship with every single believer on this planet, and he wants to be your friend. That's the God who wants to be your friend. The Bible says God friendship is for God's worshipers. God wants to be a friend with you. But you know why I know that? Because his friendship is based on his love. 
He says, loved ones, loved by God. He has better things for you, things that have to do with salvation. He delights in you. Stop letting the enemy take your shame and rub it in your face. You are delighted in by God. Stop letting the enemy say he didn't have time for your prayers or time for that situation or what you're walking through. He, you know, God doesn't want to have anything to do with that. You are loved by God. You know, love can be something that's kind of hard to grasp. It kind of feels uh, uh, just hard to get a hold of the love of God, partially because God is so big. God is so awesome. God is so great. It can be hard to, to really understand how that love works. And here's the thing. The love of God cannot be fully grasped by our mind. It's grasped first by our heart, by our spirit, by God working in us, by God putting inside of us. In fact, Ephesians chapter 3 says this. I pray, this is Paul talking about the Ephesian church, that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long, and high, and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that what? Surpasses knowledge. Some things are grasped in our heart and in our spirit before they ever touch our mind. But you need to understand the love of God. Because it's in understanding the love of God that you have power as a believer. It's in understanding the love of God that you understand the kind of friendship that he wants to have with you. But you need to get it in your heart first. Paul says this in Corinthians. He says, what no, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. No eye has seen it. No ear has heard. These things God has revealed to us through what? His spirit. They're spiritually understood. They're spiritually known. God wants to know you. God wants friendship with you. But it happens as you open your heart to say, God, I believe that. You won't have God friendship if you don't think God wants to be your friend. But you need God to do that work in your heart. Even believers need them, God to do that in, in their heart. Because sometimes the enemies lie to them and say, you know what? God's distant. God doesn't care about you. God doesn't love you. And they buy into the lie. That makes friendship really difficult. God needs to reveal it to you by his spirit. In fact, right now, I just want us to put our hands like this. Every campus, close your eyes. And say, God, thank you that you love me. Help me to grasp it. To know it in my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God's going to do it. God's going to do it. And it's when you understand his love that you stand strong. That's where you start to understand if God be for me, who can be against me? Because he's my friend. He's by my side. He's going before me. He's going to go with me into that job interview. He's going to go with me as I say, God, I'm going to turn my marriage around. God, I believe that you are going to help me. He's going to go with you as you say, God, I don't know how this is all going to work out, how I'm going to pay the mortgage this month, but I know I am a friend of God. And the, the Bible says, my God will supply all my needs according to what? His riches in his glory. And I'm one of those people that says, you know what? I'm a friend of God and God calls me his friend. So get ready, somebody. God's about to work in your life. Oh, because I feel like faith is rising in the house today. I feel like somebody's saying, you know what? I'm starting to believe it. God is my friend. God loves me. God's for me. God has good things for me. How do I know? Because I'm saved. And I didn't just get saved from something. I got saved to something. I got saved to the goodness of God. I got saved to the grace of God. I got saved to the love of God. God loves me. He delights in me. If I were the only person on this planet, God would have died for me. Because he loves me. 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 He's for me. Say, he loves me. He's for me. Amen. Amen. He's got better things for you. Better things than the distant relationship you have with God. Better things for you. He's got good things for you. The second thing is, God remembers everything you've ever done for him. God remembers everything. Look at this. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help him. I love that. 
You know, as humans, we're prone to forget. I grew up in church. One time, my parents forgot me at the church. I fell asleep under the seats, and they left. They turned all the lights out and just went home without me. Fortunately, I still turned out because I have good parents. But humans, we're prone to forget. I don't know about you. I forget things all the time. I lose things all the time. I'm always, you know, it's when I ask Beth, my wife, who is awesome, I ask her, hey, I, I say, hey, where is this? And then it just appears right in front of me. That's just how it works at our house. As humans, we're prone to forget. But you know, the, the, the truth is God never forgets. God never forgets. You know, that's a terrifying thing if you don't know the Lord. Because if you don't, if Jesus isn't Lord of your life and you're not saved, you haven't given your heart to him, then you're dead in your sin. And the Bible says that, that everything you've ever done is recorded. Every thought you've ever thought, every idle word you've ever spoken, every place where you, you hurt somebody or were dishonest or carried bitterness in your heart, and that's why salvation is so important. You need to give your life to Jesus. But the Bible says this. The only thing God forgets about Christians, for believers, is he forgets our sin. He throws it as far as the east is from the west. He doesn't remember that. Praise God for his salvation. Praise God for his grace. You know, and it's easy for us to kind of think about sometimes like, oh, I'm sure God remembers, you know, in his justice remembers sin if somebody's you're not a Christian because he's just. But we got to also remember that God remembers when we're a believer in his justice based on his character, every single thing you've ever done for him. Every time you have said, God, I'm going to help that person because they're, I want to help them. They're a believer and I want, I want to be there for them. Every time you said, God, I want to serve and encourage people. I'm going to, I'm going to write this text. I feel like this person needs encouragement. I feel like God's leading me to do that. Every time you're like, man, I need to go visit that person in the hospital. I'm going to pray for them. You did it to honor the Lord. Nobody saw it. Nobody was there to pat you on the back, but I can tell you this. God saw it and he wrote it down. Maybe you've gotten discouraged today. Because I don't know if I'm making a difference. I don't know if anybody really cares. I feel invisible right now. God cares. God sees. One of the better things he wants you to know is he's watching you and he's proud of you. And he's saying, I'm using that person. And I remember I'm writing it down. It's based on his justice. God is not unjust. His perfect, holy righteousness. He will not forget what you've done for him. That means, you know what? If you're like, man, I'm out in the rain today waving as people come in the parking lot. God sees that and he says, you know what? I'm going to remember that. You know what? You encouraged the believers as they came into the house. You encouraged that person who didn't know me and they felt like through you. Oh, wait, maybe there is a God who loves me. Just because you smiled, I see it. Sometimes we can think, you know, it's awesome when we can do big things for God, but God remembers the big things and God remembers the small things. That's why when you go, you're like, man, I'm, I'm running a camera or I'm greeting at the door. Maybe you've thought about going into grow track. You're like, I feel like God wants to use me, but I just don't know if I can make a difference. I don't really feel like I have many skills in order to do it. You know what? You just get out a door and you smile and you greet somebody. God says, I see that. Oh man, I love when they do that. God loves to put his presence on you. You know what holds people back from being used by, by God? It's just the fact that they don't think what they can do matters. But when you do it for his name, and that's what this means, the love and work you have shown him. Literally, if you translated that, it'd be shown his name. God sees. God remembers. He's going to remember every single time you've helped somebody. Every time you've shown somebody love. Every time you've shown somebody encouragement. And you know what? He rewards you for it. The Bible's full of that. Some people are like, well, I don't, I don't really like doing things for rewards. Oh, God does when you do. God likes when you do that. God loves to give rewards. 
It's all over the Bible. In fact, look at this in Colossians. It says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as your what? Reward. Come on, somebody. God's going to reward you just because you honored him. God sees it. God cares. God knows. God remembers it. He knows your name. But the thing is, if you want to be remembered by God, the only thing, the only qualifier to that is you have to do something for God. And it's out of a love for him. But if you love him, do something and watch as you experience the joy of saying, God, you know what I just did there. You know that I just gave. You know that I just helped that person. And I experienced the blessing of heaven knowing God has remembered me. There's a better way to live. And it's not forgotten. It's remembered by God as you serve him and you love him. Better things. Finally, God has a future for you. And we desire that each of you show the same earnestness to have the full assurance of hope till the end so that you may not be sluggish, but be imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. God has better things for you. He has a future for you. You know, hope is so powerful. Have the full assurance of hope. You know, many people don't understand what biblical hope looks like. They think hope, biblical hope, is kind of like a wish. They think it's like, you know, it could work out. Could not, though. I just hope it does. You know, maybe it will, maybe it won't. I hope so. And they look at the future that way. But that's not biblical hope. Biblical hope is a confident hope. Let me give you a definition of biblical hope. Biblical hope is anticipating the goodness of God. Saying, I know God's going to be good. When you look at your future, you say, I know God's going to be good. I don't know what the future holds, but I know he holds the future, right? It's anticipating his goodness. Anticipating God's going to help you. Anticipating God's going to be there in your future. Anticipating that good things are on the way because you serve God. Biblical hope says when there's a problem, this is a miracle in the making. Biblical hope says, you know what? I'm going to keep going because I know God's got it. I'm going to keep going because I know God's got something good for me in the future. He never leaves me or forsake me. I have hope. I have a full assurance of hope, a confidence in God that he is going to be there as I go into the future. Now, with that in mind, let's look at the verse again. And we desire each of you to show the same earnestness, to have the full assurances, assurance of hope until the end. Look at this. So that. So why, why is hope so important? So that you may not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Let me, this really tells us what happens when we lose hope. When we lose hope, we get sluggish. When we lose hope, we get we become a depressed Christian. We, come a, we become the kind of person that's like, I don't know if God's going to come through. I don't want to be disappointed. We don't go anymore because we don't think God will come through. We don't fight anymore because we don't know if God will show up. We don't pray anymore because we're saying, well, I don't know. you got to grab hope. The enemy wants you to live that kind of life where you shrink back, where you say, you know what? It's been hard and I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the future holds and I don't know if God's going to be there. But you know what? The truth of scripture is you grab full assurance of hope and you say, God, I believe you're going to come through and you watch as God. You know, what the Bible says those who hope in him are never disappointed. I'm not going to be disappointed as I go into the future because I know God's going to be there. I'm not going to be disappointed as I go into the future because I know he's good. Maybe you've lost your hope today, but you need to grab back a hold of it and say, God will be good to me. His goodness never runs out. His steadfast love endures forever. I got hope for the future. I look to my future and I say, God, I know you're going to show up there because you said you would, and I believe you. I'm going to be a Christian who has hope. Otherwise, you become sluggish. You shrink back. And I think it's interesting. 
when you have hope, you imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. You know what? When you don't have hope for the future, what happens is when you see somebody full of faith, instead of imitating them and being like, man, I want to be like that. I can be like that. You get intimidated by them. Because that's what a lack of hope does. It's be like, well, if you knew my family, like, or you, you knew my history, you would know I could never be like that. I could never be a faith-filled person. You know, I, I'm just not that kind of person that, I, I don't, I can't, I'm not really good at finishing. I'm, I'm not really good at having faith in situations. And you carry that anytime you walk into a situation that requires faith. You carry that attitude because you've lost your hope. You become heart sick. You become less than what God would want for you. You know, sometimes life can get hard and it can cause you to lose your hope. Sometimes something can hurt you and it can cause you to say, ah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shrink back. I'm going to. I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to try. I love though that he says, have the same earnestness to have, grab a hold of a full assurance of hope. You know, the Bible says these things remain faith, hope, and love. Meaning that it's essential to being a strong Christian is to have hope. And if you put your hope in God, you'll watch as God changes you. And God gives you a godly confidence. You know what? Some of you have kept your head down. But you know what? Hope in God does. Hope in God says, instead of saying, well, that can never be me. And I don't know if God can use me. No, yeah, I, I believe God can use me. I believe. I, you know what I'm going to start to do? I'm going to start to hope now. I'm going to start to step out and pray for somebody. I'm going to start to step out and start to speak faith. When you see somebody who's a faithful person, you're going to start to say, you know what, if God could do that in their life, then he could do it in my life. You're going to start to be the person that says, you know what, God, I'm tired of being depressed and I'm tired of God believing the worst about myself and believing the lies of the enemy. I'm going to stop listening to myself. I'm going to start talking to myself and speaking the word of God over myself because I'm going to be a person of hope because I know as I do, you have better things for me that the people that you put around me who are faith-filled and who have gone for the long haul and have gone to believe God, I'm going to be just like them. It doesn't matter, God, what I've seen in my family. It doesn't matter what my parents look like. It doesn't matter who I've been up to this point. I am going to be a person of hope. You watch what God does. God's got better things for you. Stop believing the lies of the enemy. Be encouraged today. God's got good things for you. Be encouraged today. God's going to work in your life. Be encouraged today. God wants to be your friend. Get in the car and say, God, I thank you. I'm a friend of God. God, I thank you. You remembered. I, even me coming to church today, you wrote it down. I thank you that you're going to be in my future. Thank you so much for joining James River Church on our YouTube channel. Our prayer is that you were encouraged and your faith was strengthened today. And we want to let you know that we'd love for you to be a part of our online family. As well, we'd love if you subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell for notifications. You'll be so glad you did because we're always putting out great sermons, new worship content, and it helps you know when we go live for our weekly services. We hope you have an amazing day and thank you again for watching. God bless.